Pocosin is an Algonquin Indian term meaning swamp on a hill, and it's a very good descriptor for what we have out here. Even though this land looks very, very flat, there are slight differences in elevation as you go across the landscape. Where those elevational changes occur, why they occur is from the development of the peat soils. Peat is a high organic content soil. It develops uh, when uh, the area is underwater or in, in a wet state. Uh, the leaves and, and dead material from the plants fall and uh, in that anaerobic condition under the water, it builds up over time and creates a dome. What's happened though over time is that people have come in and in order to use the land for farming or for pasture or other purposes, uh, they've ditched and drained the land. And so the sponge no longer holds the water because there's a hole cut through it and it's like a, it's like a bathtub drain. You just, you pull the plug and it just drains everything off. So the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service manages three national wildlife refuges in the Albemarle Pamlico region. And there's about 300,000 acres of drained or degraded forest-based peat wetlands or pocosins that are in need of restoration. And this presents one of the greatest restoration opportunities for peat-based wetlands in the, in the U.S. And in fact, the acreage in need of restoration here is comparable to some of the largest peat wetland restorations internationally. So here we are at Great Dismal Swamp National Wildlife Refuge. We're sitting roughly uh, at the North Carolina-Virginia line, looking at um, the burn scar from the 2011 Lateral West Fire. What you're seeing here is the impacts from a deep burning peat fire. Five to six feet of peat was lost. Um, it changes the habitat types. And for us, for our management, of this area, you know, we're not sure what's going to return. It'll return probably in some scrub brush, but the mature forest and our Atlantic white cedar restoration project that was occurring in this area um, has now been wiped out. This area is likely not suitable for, for cedar uh, any longer, which historically was a pure cedar stand. The Nature Conservancy has uh, been active in the Albemarle Sound ecosystem for 40 years. We started here at the Dismal Swamp uh, to, uh, to establish the, the refuge here through a donation to the Conservancy, we then transfer the property to uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service. And, and what we're doing here at the Dismal Swamp and also Alligator River and Pocosin Lakes is really what we call continuity of purpose. Uh, we started out uh, doing land protection work with the service, uh, we still are doing land protection work, but now we're doing a lot more ecological management, working with the, with the refuges to restore the hydrology of these peatlands. And uh, this is just a, a great example of a of a partnership between a, uh, one of the most uh, influential uh, federal landowners, uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service, and a, and a, and a national, international uh, uh, conservation organization, the Nature Conservancy, to accomplish ecosystem restoration at scale. And, and really to be effective uh, to increase the resiliency of these peatlands of fire, we need to be implementing water management at the scale of tens of thousands, really hundreds of thousands of acres. Well, there are a number of species that use the Pocosins, uh, Pocosin wetlands. Uh, one that comes to mind right away is a red cockaded woodpecker. We don't have any on our park, but we'd like to en enhance the habitat and get it there. There are other species that use it. Um, uh, Atlantic white cedar is an obligate of uh, Pocosin. There are species that require Atlantic white cedar for their existence. The habitat is really good for black bear and deer and other animals. so. Uh, there are a number of reasons for wanting to do this. Since the refuge was established, we've seen some pretty uh, dramatic impacts to shorelines and habitats in this, in this area here. The shoreline is about 200 yards further west than it was uh, back in the 1970s. And in this area we're standing in, the tree line extended several hundred yards downstream from where we are. A complicating factor when salt water and peat soils interact is that the salt breaks down the peat soils at a much more rapid rate, which affects the plant community that uh, is growing on the peat soil. Right now we're standing in what I call a frontline community, which is the communities that are next to the sound and most susceptible to impacts from saltwater intrusion. If we can slow down and manage the saltwater intrusion into these frontline communities, then we're also protecting our peat-based communities further inland. Uh, or the interior communities that, that develop on the, the deep organic soils we have over there. 
One third of the carbon in the world is stored in peatlands from Russia, Alaska, Canada, uh, Indonesia, and right here in North Carolina, we have vast quantities. Over the last 4,500 years, it builds up very slowly, only one or two millimeters a year, but uh, that storage, because it decomposes so slowly, over time it basically builds up and creates this vast carbon sink. And that sink is something that's very important for the global climate problem we have. Carbon markets are an innovative uh, mechanism to help provide incentives to people to help restore and conserve these lands and keep this carbon locked away and not emitted into the atmosphere. We can certainly never make it exactly as it was before the ditches were put in place, but what we're trying to do is mimic as closely as possible that natural community type that really is unique only to this part of the country.